guys so I am currently driving obviously but anyway so I was just coming back this back way and um, I was listening to some gospel music and I come across this um, little stop sign or like stoplight thing and it said um, like maximum three minute wait so and I'm like okay and you know a lot of times in life and just things and just life in general like the world is such a fast pace like you know just the whole world everything is just fast you know you can have anything at the tip of your fingers uh, you know internet access could pull up any like type of inter information that you need and um, sometimes in life we need to stop and just wait and just listen and I was thinking that you know I've been thinking that for a while now and um, here lately that's where I've been I've just been like waiting and listening silently and just trusting in God and a lot of times whenever we hit to this place in our life to where we're at and to where you like you need to wait you need to listen and we should always listen and pray but sometimes in your life you get to this point to where you're just you know you're there and you're waiting and you're praying and you're just believing in God to show you like a direction to go in life um, and whenever you get to that point and like layers start falling off of you like things that's held you bound or um, you know depression anxiety um, fear any of that stuff even in sickness you know it's a phase and I've noticed for me whenever like everything that I've been through with my back and all of that kind of stuff you know during the fire and during the going up the mountain and in the desert during those times you see nothing but struggle and you feel like that struggle is so hard you feel like you can't get past that struggle but you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you keep climbing that mountain you keep going through that desert where it's hot and dry and you just like need one drop of water if I can just get one drop of, of water you know then I could make it through the next step of life that I'm going through if I can just take one more step up that mountain then I can come over the mountain into the valley where it's easy trucking but then there's rocks and then there's you know dips and you know wrong turns and there's this and there's that but during those times in our life whenever we're faced with all of the circumstance and sometimes the devil tries to cloud our, our vision but during those times if we truly listen God is revealing himself to us more and more than ever um, and that's exactly where I've been right now and I don't even know what time it is I've got to hurry because I've got to get out of here um, I pulled into this little thing while driving but um, I'm gonna get out with you guys as I was saying um, during those times in our, our life whenever we just feel like we can't get to the destination that we want or you know that place where we long for it's in those moments where God reveals himself to us in a way that um, you can only at times see if you're uh, look at this how appropriate dead end sometimes he gets us to those points like the dead end and I just I just felt led to pull over right here it's a pretty view and everything and I figured I'd pull over and talk to you guys um, other than just driving um, but a lot of times in life whenever we get to those dead ends in our life either you can detour it which all of us want the easy way everybody wants the easy way we can either detour it or we can stand in front of that dead end 
and face whatever you need to face in life and get past that dead end and move forward into where God wants you to be. And let me tell you guys, like seriously, I have been, I have been here to this, these dead ends in my life far too long, far too long. You know, the devil wants us at dead ends. He wants you, um, you know, to struggle. He wants you to see the picture that he paints that we see that's not of God. Whether it's him, you know, speaking defeat over in your life, say, saying that you can't get past all of your heartaches or your failures or your disappointments or you know anything the devil wants you to sit and think that and believe it and before you know it you will be like listening to that and believing his lies and what he's speaking to you and over you um you know Whenever God created us, he knew us way before any of us were born. He knew who we were, we were going to be. He knew he knew everything. He knew our the positive side about us and he knew the negative side about us. Um so we need to always realize and to believe what God thinks of us. And you know, that's when the devil will start backing off and you start speaking that over your life every day and he will have to okay, leave. I totally had to get in my car because it's super hot out here. But anyways, um, like that Bible verse and it comes to me often. I think it's uh, Jeremiah 29 11 and it's stating how God knows the plans for us and it's not to harm us, but it's for us to pro prosper and have, you know, a good future. And God has spoke that over each and every one of us. Like that's what he wants and desires for all of us. And at times the devil likes to put little things in your mind and just full of discouragement. And, um, but that's not what God says. God says he has plans for us to prosper and not to harm us, to have a good future. So, you know, and I have fell short where I haven't been reading my Bible much, but here in the past week or so, I've read it every day. Um, I've got to read it today. I haven't read it today, but, um, you know, the Bible is our roadmap and the Bible is where we get our food that we need to you know, make it through the trials and the tribulations and the mountains and the deserts or whatever shape that you're in. That's where we get our hope from and that's where we get our strength from. And um, I've just been praying for myself for a different type of thinking and focusing on what God says and what he wants in my life. Um, and I realized I have been right at one of these dead ends. This is just so appropriate. I can't believe that I just kind of, normally I don't come back this way, but I just stopped right here. But how appropriate is this dead end? And here lately, I have been totally, for a long, long time, staying at a dead end in my life and just standing there and listening to defeat and discouragement, um, sadness, struggle, um, you know, the sickness with my back and, you know, financial parts of, of life and, you know, all of this stuff, just things, you know. We're down here passing through and I had to totally realize that um, it's time to release that stuff, let it go. And it has hit me full force the past couple months and I have really dealt with a lot of things that happened to me in the past and um, 
I think it's sort of surfaced its way out, which is a good thing because I, I needed to get all of that out. I needed to, um, you know, when you pray and you say, you know, I'm going to let God take it over and not think about it, we pick it back up. And I, I picked mine back up over and over and I relived in the past and, you know, I played these things over and over, but I never did deal with them. I, I stayed at the dead end and I sat and listened to the devil's lies and um, all of that stuff. But once I finally came to that really dead end point that's been there, this wall that's been up in my life for so long, these strongholds in my life that's been up for so long, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna face it. I, I'm gonna face it, I'm gonna deal with it, I'm gonna get it out of my life to where I can proceed in what God has for me and what God wants in my life. And um, I'm not gonna lie, the moment that I done that, I was petrified, I was scared to death. I was like, because see, I'm, I'm the type of person, I bottle everything up, I keep it in, and I hold it in until I bust. And then I'm just one hot mess. And it's a lot of it's because at a young age I had to grow up quickly and um, you learned how to carry things on your own and you learned how to just deal with it because you had to deal with it and um, but I finally got to that dead end and, and you know God spoke to me you don't have to do this you don't have to stand there and and, and live this way. You don't have to carry the burdens that you, you know, that you've been carrying. And um, I would listen to God, and then I'd hear the devil saying, you know, this is th this is what you're always going to remember. You know, these things, the hurt, the sadness, the, you know, um, even the bitterness that I had in my heart, and um, that I realized that I had, but I thought that I didn't have. And um, but when you finally get to that part to where you're done and you're tired and you're tired of carrying these things and when you fully get there and then when you hit them head on it's like it's hard and it's scary and it's stressful and it's just I think that's when you fully 100% trust in God and you're like hey you're gonna get me through this you know and then I'm often I'm often reminded by and I'm not saying you're going to forget your past. That's there. But there's a difference between in, between like carrying it and with you all the time. Your past is going to be there always. But you can't carry it with you. And um, so, like, I, like God would remind me, you know, hey, this thing here that you went through, I brought you through it. And he would be like, during that time, you didn't think you're like you were going to make it through it. During this time, you think, or you thought your world was crashing down, and you thought that you couldn't stand. And you know, I can relate to so many times, like just even losing my mom. Like that was like the worst thing in my life I've ever been through. And it's one of the hardest things that I've ever went through in my life. Even even my mama. Um, and God delivered me from when my mama died. It took me years. It took it, it took me years, but I would carry it day in and day out, and I was so sad all the time. And like I can, like God reminded me, like time and time again, I can remember just going through the day, like you know, can't do it. You know, I can't make it without my mom. Like, how am I going to do this, Lord? You know. But each day I would get up. And each day, even if I couldn't feel God, or each day, like my heart hurt so bad, I would say, God, I know you're there. And I said, God, I know I'm angry and I'm bitter, but I said, God, I know you're not gonna leave me. And I would get up every day, and even though, even how I felt, I, I didn't go one day without just like questioning God why. I could be driving down the road and I would be so hurt and angry and bitter like I would see people with their moms or 
Like if I would hear people disrespecting their mom, I would get so angry. And you know, God reminded me, you know, you thought you couldn't get past that. You thought that you couldn't live. You thought that you couldn't smile again. You thought that, you know, your life would be over in misery. And I remember, I think it was about four or five years after she had died. It was a long time. Like I battled with this for a long, long time. And I've shared it with you guys before. It's one of my strong testimonies in life. And, you know, I had Gracie at six weeks after I had my mom, and she was in there when I delivered her. That's a time of, you know, being happy, but at the same time, I was just grieving so bad. Different types of emotions just going through my body and my soul and my mind. Katie was two, and just so much was going on. I shortly after that found out I had heart trouble because I was having heart trouble when I was giving birth to her. Like to scare my mama and my mama to death. And I remember sitting down and like I prayed out to God one, one night and I was like, God, I can't do this. Like I'm hurting so bad. Like I can't stand to even breathe. I can't stand to think. And I remember getting up and I would just keep, you know, questioning the Lord and trying to pray the best I can and question God and not understanding why and just being so hurt and feeling so alone and I remember sitting down on the couch Katie was watching Spongebob and I was just kind of staring into it and I remember praying I wasn't praying out loud I was praying in my mind pretty much just talking to God going through the motions. I spent a lot of times going through the motions. And the kids, my mom, Maddie, she, she got me to get out of the house every day. I'd go and sit with her and bring the girls and go down there and sit and talk and just to get my mind off of it. But I remember sitting there looking in the TV and I was praying and I said God I can't do this no more I'm tired you know I, I need your help and it was like God spoke like plain as day it wasn't out loud but it was in my mind and spirit and he told me he said if you take one step I'll take two and that's like these dead ends in life you know we're stuck we're stuck just as all get out and it's like you can't get past the obstacle in front of you but if you take one step you know God will take the rest and the moment I prayed that prayer and I was talking to God he removed like I still miss my mom and stuff but that dark hole that I was in of you know of, I was just hopeless and honestly I just felt like I couldn't live anymore and I was just each day was getting worse and worse and my heart would hurt more and more each day but that day I spoke that prayer God took something off my shoulders it was like a light switch the darkness and the light came on and God helped me to get past every bit of that do I miss my mom yes every day of my life Is it hard? Yes. But God helped me and he took it away. And now I'm okay to say, hey, she's gone. She's in a better place. Do I miss her sometimes? Do I long for her sometimes? Yes. But that deep, dark, oh God, it was so bad. Like the feeling was so bad. And I've, I've often sometimes here recently have you know, with my back and stuff, kind of felt myself slipping back into that sadness and like the little darkness where Satan wants you. <clears throat> but then God reminds me, hey, I brought you through that and I didn't bring you this far to leave you here. You take one foot step and I'm gonna get you through this. So, like I was just so tired of dealing with stuff that I had been carrying confusion and not knowing and just 
just a bunch of things in life, just tons of things in life. And I'm like, I've got to get past this dead end, this, this dead stop, and I'm gonna put everything out there to God, and He's going to reveal to me day by day, and He's gonna take everything off of my chest and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. And at first, it was hard. Being by yourself and just trying to focus on letting those things go and like focusing on trusting in God. And one day it had hit me again and I just pulled out my Bible and I started reading and everything. But, you know, it says in the Bible, we've got to be prayed up and, you know, ready for whenever the attack of Satan hits us. And, you know, life's short. Each and every one of us need to get right with the Lord and, um, try, and try to stri strive to do better every day. I know that, you know, in my life, I've made many of faults and failures and stuff like that. But I know that I'm called. And I know that I'm called to, you know, do things for the Lord and, you know, share my testimonies for these people out there that feel like they can't make it and they need someone to say, hey, you can, you know, hold to the Lord, hold to Jesus because he's there. And he's the one that will see you through any heartaches, any, any kind of trials that you're going through. Hold to God's hand. So not only have I been letting go of past I have also been working on myself and you know trying to get things out of my life that's not of God and you know each and each and every one of us can find something that's you know faulty in your life whether it's sleeping and cussing or you know whatever not reading your Bible not going to church not helping somebody along the way that needs help. And so I'm working on me. And you know, sometimes we get so busy in this world and this life, it's such a fast pace. And you forget to stop and work on you and you forget the Lord. I've never forgot God, but I've kind of put him beside before. Because, you know, when you're hurting, I mean, we need God more and more every day, but when you're hurting and like things going on in your life, it's just like a whirlwind. But we need to focus on what God wants for us and forget everything else. And it will all fall in, in the way God wants it to. So that's what I've been working on myself. Has it been hard? Yes. Do I feel better? Yes. But it is a slow process and time is short for all of us. Like, you know, none of us are promised tomorrow. I mean, you look on the news and you see all these shootings and, um, you know, people going to Walmart. You could be going, Lord, you could be going with your kids to Walmart and not come out of there. Somebody could just lose it. Satan takes over their mind. and. You might not come out of there with one, with one of your kids. That's the last day you see them. So we each need to work on us daily. We need to get right with God. We need to pray and seek God more than ever because, and I know it probably sounds like I'm preaching, but this is what I believe in my heart. And I believe time short. I, there, there, there's too much hate going on in the world. And you know, people's forgot love and people's forgot God. And people just thinks about themselves and people just want to always point the finger about some someone's faults and um, just like me being on social media people point their fingers all the time about me which is okay because God's my judge but does it hurt me I'm not gonna lie yeah some of the some of the, the comments that I read are hurtful and they're disgusting and they're just flat-out wrong but guess what? Just guess what? God knows me and God loves me. And God has called me to help 
others out here in this walk of life that are going through hell on earth. And I pray for those people that are so ugly at their heart to, to why they act that way. Because there's something wrong with them. Something that they think that they've got to to be so ugly to others. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're a Christian, you know, you wouldn't have that in your heart at all. But life's hard, you know. We should be helping one another and praying for one another. And, you know, when you have that finger pointing, remember, there's one right back at you. And any of us can easily fall to that. If I'm pointing my finger, there's one going right back at me because, hey, I'm, I can find stuff in my life that I've got to work on. But there comes a time in your life like me when you let it go and you focus on God and He will bring you out to the brighter side and He will take your hand and lead you through all of life's struggles, all of life's heartaches all of the tears that you shed he will be right there holding you and I'm gonna tell you you know my life has not been easy it's not I mean you know I, I probably harped on it a lot in the past but you know what this is my story and my story is not over my story is actually just getting started um, God's got a plan for us God's got a plan for you. God's got a plan for me. So whatever the enemy is talking to you or, or telling you, start speaking that Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, I think it is. He's got plans. And don't let Satan keep you at that dead end. Don't let him make you afraid to go further as to what God's got in store for you. I will press through. I will break through the strongholds that Satan's got bound on me. And you can too by God's word. And there's power in his name. If you holler out his name and pray to him, he hears you even before you speak. And those strongholds that Satan has put upon your life will go down. It may not feel instantly. It might be a little at a time. But if you keep pressing and you keep praying and you keep seeking and you keep believing God's going to do what he said he'll do. He, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But God will go with you through and through all the way if you hold to his hand. And God's faithful. God has never let me down. Ever. Not once in my life has he ever let me down. I've let him down. I have let him down so much. So much. But what does God say? You're mine, Stephanie. You're mine. I, I love you. I'm here for you. I've got a plan for your life. And that's just you, whoever you're, you are out there watching. And if you're feeling defeat, if, if Satan has put depression upon you, if Satan has put fear upon you, if Satan has put anxiety upon you, if Satan has put all of these things upon you that you are stressed out so much that you feel like you're sick and you're going to die, start rebuking it. Start getting your Bible out and reading. Even if you feel like you can't read it or even if you feel like you're reading it and it's not making sense, you keep on reading. Because I'm telling you right now, God will reveal himself to you and he will give you the wisdom and the encouragement that you need to get through your valley or through your desert or through your mountain top, he will get you over to that valley. But when you get over to that valley, always remember there's going to be rocks and there's going to be turns and there's going to be bends because, hey, God brought you there. When you're here, he's going to bring you through that again. And when you keep going and going and going until we get home, we're going to be going through hell down here. But God will be with us through and through. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking that over myself too. God's gave me a word today. I've, I've, I have recorded it, but this is going to me too. Like God has, I have prophesied over me and I'm prophesying over you. And in the name of Jesus, the devil's got to go. The devil's got to go. The devil's going to go. And I'm thankful for his peace. 
that passeth all, all understanding. He is an, an almighty God. And I'm thankful for the burdens that God has took off of my shoulders. And I'm thankful for the strength that God's given me whenever my strength was so weak that I couldn't even go. When I took one step, he would take the other two for me. And when I'd get a little more weaker, I'll take one more step and he'll take three more for me. And then when I felt like I couldn't step and I'd lift my foot up, he would carry me. So I'm telling you, shake off yourself and see the salvation that God has in store for you. Don't let the enemy steal you of what God's called to you. Don't let the enemy let other things come to you and say you're no good. Look at your past. Look at what you've done. That's any, anyone. The devil likes to use your past. Because I am what God says I am. And same to you. But I'm, you know what, even, even these old valleys that I go through and these old struggles that have really brought me down to my knees to where I felt like I could not go, you know, I'm thankful for them because I never once ever in my life want to be like, you know, people that, you know, just go through life. And some people just don't have love in their hearts. And it's so sad like because, you know, I've, I've got bitter before. And I've prayed and prayed to God, God, don't ever let my heart get that way. Ever. Because there's, there's so many people out here that needs help. So many. And, you know, I'm like, God, get me through this. You know, put back that fire that was once up on my life. You know, ignite it one more time. You know, I've got a call for God. And I have so much I need to do for God. And you know, the devil thought he has had me at this dead end road and he's thought that he's gonna keep me here. And But you know what, I got news for him. He He's not no more because it's time to get busy for God and it's time to take back everything, everything that Satan stole from me, everything. Because you know what? We're passing through this walk of life. And when God calls my name, or when God calls your name, I'll see my mama again. You know, I'll see my mama and my papa again. And I'll see my daddy again. <clears throat> there was some, a lot of bad things that's happened in my childhood. And I've, I've, I've never spoke about, about it on here. God knows about it. And my daddy was a good man. He had a good heart, but you know, some things overtook him. But every Wednesday, I would get a prayer cloth at church and, and, and pray for my daddy. And before he died, he went. He went to church and I remember standing in line with him and praying. You know, and when God calls me home, I believe I'll see my daddy. I believe I will. There's one thing that I remember my daddy telling me as a child, and I'm like, I can remember it like it's yesterday. He said, Lucy, I said, what, daddy? He said, don't ever get out of church. He said, because if you ever do, he said, it's hard to get back in. And, and you know what? He was right because I've been there. And I have been pressing my way back of going to church. The devil has strongholds, and he knows how to keep us. But don't let your past destroy your future and what God has. He has plans for us to prosper. He does not have plans for us to die. You know, one day we're going to die. But like, you know, God wants us to live a joyful life. And he wants us to be joyful through the, the thick and the thin. He wants us to praise him through the trials and the valleys. 
praise him. Thank you, God, for holding my hand. I may not see the light right now, but boy, whenever we get down to the end of it, God's light will be shining. And I'm thankful for that. You know, this world don't mean nothing to me. Not one thing. It's material things. I don't have a whole lot of money. Not at all. But I get by. And I'm going to tell you something. When I get to heaven, I will live in a mansion. But most of all, I'll be going to a place where I can see the face of Jesus. The one that's carried me through everything. And I could fall down on his knees and just thank him for everything. But I love him. I love the Lord and I've let him down. But it's time for me to take a stand. And start seeking God and, and getting to back to the calling for my life. But I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. Pray for me. Pray that God, you know, leads me the way that I need to go. And doors start opening. Because I've got a vision. I've got a vision. And if you don't have a vision, you will spiritually die. But I, oh boy, do I have a vision. My heart is to go out to the homeless, the sick people, people out here struggling on the road, just wherever God sends me, take me there. You know, let, let me tell them that, hey, I love you and God loves you and you can get out of this. That's where my heart's at. My heart is sharing my testimony. You know, singing the wondrous works that God's done. Singing His grace. Singing His power. Singing His healing power. I may not sing the greatest, but I sing. And when I sing, I sing because of who He is and how awesome He is and how thankful I am for Him for everything that He's done for me. Without Him, I would not be sitting here today. Without Him, I wouldn't be saying but God's faithful, and God's merciful, and God's graceful, and I thank Him. So if you're watching this, hi my YouTube peeps, y'all follow me, the ones that have followed me through thick and thin. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, what valley you're in, but God loves you, and you will come out of it. And I pray right now that God will come over each and every one of you that's watching and just touch us, Father. Father, if anyone's battling depression or if Satan's sitting up on their shoulder and, you know, telling them, why are you here? If you're sick, if you're lonely. I pray, God, that, God, you touch each and every one of us. Touch me. Clean me up and make me more like you, God. Help us, Jesus. God, we need you every day of our life. And even the people that points the fingers, that judges, whoever they are, God, help them. Help their soul. Renew their mind and renew their, their heart. Give them strength, God, because, God, you love them. You love us. You love, you, you love all of us, God. God, I'm just asking you, God, to help us. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. And, God, take off these strongholds upon our lives that are keeping us in a dead-end zone. And help us to just step through that, those blocks. Bust through those blocks. And hold your hand in the darkest place. As long as we've got you, God, that's all that matters. As long as we're holding on to you, God, that's all that matters. And even when we're passing through those dark waters, Lord, and the waters are trying to overtake us, Father God, I've got your hand. We've got your hand, Jesus. And when you lead us on out of there, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, I thank you and I praise you, God. I thank you for touching my YouTube family, Jesus God. There's a lot of them that has been there for me.
And God, I ask you, Jesus, to give them the desires of their heart. And whatever is bothering them today, I ask you, God, in your name, to help them renew their mind and give them strength because, God, we need you every day, every hour. And Jesus, I know this is a different video, but I love you guys, and I'm praying for you all. I just got a touch from the Holy Ghost. He's so good to us. But anyways, I've got to go get my kids from school. I just had me a good meeting, y'all. Y'all were with me. Praise the Lord.